our next speaker, Elizabeth Reincourt, gets her rocks off by riding bikes on gravel. In addition to riding her bike everywhere, she's a documentary filmmaker, so she always has a camera with her on her rides. But tonight, she won't be spinning her wheels. She titled her talks, Gravel Adventures by Bicycle, but I call it Rocks and Rolls. Ladies and gentlemen, Elizabeth Reincourt. Can't you uh, tell by my face? It's raining, it's 60 degrees, and I'm having a great time. And Andrew, I'm sorry, it's not flat. By the end of uh, this next five minutes, I hope to convince you to go on some crazy adventures with me. What am I talking about? 150 miles. Uh, this is Lincoln to Ponca State Park. I did that earlier in June. All in one day, it took like 14 hours. Uh, pretty awesome. Uh, just some friends getting together, ride our bikes all day long. Takes a while. So the Midwest, it's kind of the premier region for this. It's our natural resource. We might not have mountains. We don't have these beautiful scenic like Alps or anything like that, but we've got a lot of gravel. So my race calendar has taken me all around the region, including this last Saturday, Gravel Worlds, which is held right here in Lincoln, Nebraska. I ride a Warax bicycle designed here in Lincoln by Sam Rosenau. Uh, it's a custom steel cyclocross bike called the World Menacing Dame, and boy, do I love her. But you can ride just about anything. There are people on road bikes, mountain bikes, tandems. You get up really early to do this. So my alarm goes off at 4 a.m., but I don't really need it. Uh, I've been tossing and turning all night because I'm wondering how the hell I'm going to do this. And uh, I'm also really excited because I'm going to spend the day with friends, and it's going to be awesome, and there are all these blinky lights, and the morning is amazing. Like, it's going to be 100 later, but right now at 6. The sun's coming up, it's beautiful. I've never been so somewhere so gorgeous. The mood is electrifying and I'm surrounded by hundreds of other cyclists. It's so awesome. We're going on an adventure. And like I said, I'm a documentary filmmaker, right? I've got a camera with me and I want to stop and take pictures of everything because when you're on gravel and dirt roads, you see the countryside. So you're seeing barns and the clouds and these little baby goats and everything is amazing. Everything's a picture. And then like here, 45 miles into the race, I'm cruising. My average speed is up. I am rocking. I am crushing the gravel. It feels awesome. I am cocky, confident, and delusional about my finish time. It is awesome right now. The cue sheets, because the organizers of the events prepare a route for you. The cue sheets have routed me down a mud road because, great, it rained, and now dirt road is mud road. If I ride my bike on this, it will break. So I get off the bike, I shoulder the bike, and I walk. And boy, by the end of that, am I hungry. The breakfast I had at 4 a.m., gone, evaporated. So I'm looking for a convenience store in the next town, and I'm eating anything I can see. And boy, do I wish it was full of fruits and vegetables, but it's not. Big boy pickles, chips, whatever I want, donuts, everything. That binge that I had at the convenience store, that was a bad idea. Um, it's time to find some shade, and it's getting really hot. So I'm going to take a nap in a ditch. Pretty awesome, like you go sleep in a ditch for about 10 minutes. It's amazing. Uh, you really hope that a car doesn't find you and hit you, so you kind of put your bike out in the road. Um, and then after that, you know, what's another 50 miles? I mean, hell, I've gone 100 already. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to finish this thing, right? Just see what's next. Maybe we'll cross the river. Maybe we'll get a beer at the next convenience store. I'm kind of bored. Honestly, I've gone 100 miles now, and, um, Nebraska is really beautiful, and it's still really beautiful, and it's really hilly, and I don't know if I can actually go any slower and still keep um, upright on the bike. And um, did you know it's possible to fall asleep while riding a bicycle? It is. It is. You wake up pretty fast when you're kind of careening into the ditch. Um, but you know, at this point in time, I, I feel like the end is inside. I'm gonna have another beer, and man, 10 miles to go, euphoria. The selfies are proliferous right now. I'm gonna finish, the sun is setting, it is beautiful out again, and man, I'm gonna do it. OMG, OMG, OMG. Oh, that tower is really still kind of 10 miles away. Um, that's kind of far. Did, did I charge my lights uh, last night? Um, it's getting kind of dark. Really hope the cars see me. It's Friday, Saturday night, it's kind of late, and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna get done. And then this is when I crossed the finish line at the Dirty Kansas, which is a 200-mile gravel race in the Flint Hills of Kansas. 
It was 2.30 in the morning. I didn't realize it was that late. I didn't have a clock. I wasn't looking at my computer anymore. And uh, yeah, I've been doing it for 20 hours. Um, and then this picture, my friend Corey Godfrey, who's really fast, he finished hours before me. He comes to, to the finish line to pick up my friend Matt and I. And the minute I see him right after he takes his picture, I just burst into tears. Like, wow, I did it. This is amazing. So um, it's kind of hard, but you know, you get to eat as much food as you want, like three breakfasts. You get to sleep for hours, and everybody thinks you're really tough. So um, really what I'd like you to do is um, grab a friend, come out and ride with us. It's pretty awesome. Uh, four years ago, I had no idea that this world existed. And now I've got this whole new family. And this last Saturday at Gravel Worlds, I brought home the World Championship Stripes, single speed women's, because I decided I wanted to 